In studio with the Admiral Bill Stubblefield and Maria Lawrenson as well. And we go from one county commissioner to another, from the vice president to the president. We're arcing up, Bill. And a former president to the Berkeley County Commission here, too. Now, I'm not sure we're arced up there. Were, were you, a, you were a commission at that point, right? I was. You well, were, both, were you a council? Both council and commission, yeah. Yeah, that was a mistake. They should yeah. have never changed uh, the name. Let's go back a little bit, harking back a little bit. The, uh, By the way, we should, can we introduce our guests first? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> They, we we all know my fault. Yeah, the yeah. County Commission President Jim Whitaker. Just, Whit, good to see you. Good morning. Good to be here. And uh, Nick Deal, who has uh, on his business card, it says continue on next business card when you look at all the different descriptions about what he does. Uh, Nick, good morning to you. How are you, sir? Good, good. How are you doing? Uh, but it is in this capacity as the man who is in charge of the airport that we will be speaking with him today and perhaps a few other things as well. Go ahead, Edward. Yeah, I was going to say, picking up on last discussion, uh, our chat room uh, raised an issue uh, that we did not address with the panelists, but it can be addressed with uh, with Jim Whitaker. There was one employee that got a significant pay increase this past year. Uh, would you want to address the situation behind that, Jim? Sure. It was uh, it was a Department of our Community um, uh, Service or Day Report. Uh, Tim Zaya. He has uh, m- multiple hats that he wears for the county, and his salary was at one that uh, needed addressing. And compared to the other uh, elected officials' salaries or you know they're stationary as far as that goes and, and governor by the state but uh when you look at our department heads and what he was managing and what he was doing um as well as additional um duties that he undertook on his uh on his position without any compensation and we knew that uh, it was time to uh, to look at him justly and and to uh to pay him accordingly so and also uh compared to other counties as well he was uh he was significantly under under uh compensated very much under yeah. compensated yeah. and his so the rate um that the gentleman talked about before was 15 percent across the board but he was significantly higher than that for these reasons correct yes, yes. we we actually any employee that takes on additional duties are compensated uh, with with additional pay. Okay. Now, if it's a continuation, then of course the salary would continue. But if it's a temporary position, then they would revert back to their you know original salary. Gotcha. And also, Tim is doing a phenomenal job. A he, phenomenal. There's job. no one, no other uh, uh, activity such as what we have under Tim that is comes close to what Berkeley County has. Yeah, I mean the the ability that he has and the grants that he receives um, and how he manages them, um, he he has done the, his lion's share for, yeah. for that department. Yeah. Yeah. Was any of the opioid settlement money used to pay for his raise, Jim? Not that I know of. It came through yeah. the the county. Yeah. Um, general, yeah, and, general and county. The the question was asked by one of our listeners, and whenever I get a question like that with money that comes from something else. Uh, the old term comes back to me, was used about 20, 30 years ago in a federal uh, debate discussion. Money is fungible. I mean, you get money from one source, you have money from another source, it all goes into a, a pot Big of money. Pot. So what you divert money to from this or that, I, I just, I don't, I don't think the question in itself has a real strict answer to it because money comes from a lot of places if, if you would look at what we do uh, when it comes to like maybe a one-time influx in our budget mm-hmm. we're very careful not to include that in salaries because if it's not going to be there next year then that is not going to be there for the person so I think also that uh, <clears throat> Gary wine addressed that as well with the commitment to the nine plus million dollars on the day report center expansion and facility that the three million plus that came in was already earmarked for that. So correct. Uh, those are questions out there that members of our audience have. Appreciate you addressing those. Uh, Nick, we want to talk about the airport uh, now because I understand that Marshall University is making a major investment in the uh, in the in the airport and has uh, a few things that uh, programs they'd like to start doing there. Can you address that? Yep, that is correct. We have, um, you know, for for three years we were we were in a state of some pretty rapid growth and we recognized during that time that that one of the needs that we really had uh was we need we we had a desperate need for for some educational options there shepherd university um, has their uh business administration program with the concentration aviation which is a great program um they've been gosh they've that's been in existence for two or three years now um will this this program affect that program well actually i think they will complement one another and so we're excited about that. This program came about um, through some conversations with, with Marshall University. I just happened to be in 
uh, Huntington and ran into the uh, the uh, vice president and general counsel for Marsh for Marshall University and uh, the um, our representatives from the West Virginia Development Office introduced me to them um, and we we talked for a while they came up to visit they loved the airport they loved the opportunity they saw here and decided to start a flight school here we think that we're we're anticipating that uh, growing into something much larger um, as as time goes on we've got some other big announcements with regards to educational options coming uh, sometime a little later this spring and we are going to be a uh, we're, we're going to have most of the educational options you may need to go into the field of aviation um, offered at the Eastern West Virginia Regional Airport. Uh, we hope this time next year. How will this program complement the Shepherd program? So this program um, right now they have their flight school here. Um, ultimately, they've been, they've been Shepherd. Sh I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, the yeah, right now the flight school with Marshall University that yeah. they they opened on February first. They'll they'll start to develop their first class sometime in this sometime this spring likely, mm -hmm. and so they're working on that now. But that's that's just the flight school aspect of things. Uh, where there are plans to bring more more opportunity to the airport, uh, including um, a, a bachelor's degree in aviation, and uh, they can. Uh, they will offer through Marshall University. They'll offer a uh, uh, that bachelor's degree. They'll offer the opportunity to get your commercial pilot's license as part of that program. They have a lot of nice offerings specific to the aviation field. But one, what they don't have is they don't have those business classes to go along with that. And so, um, one of the it's it, in talking to a lot of experts in the field. One of our uh, our understanding is, is that a very attractive uh, combination is a commercial pilot's license and a degree in business okay and blue ridge has a flight uh mechanics uh program well they're just they're, they're just, just starting started. that and that okay. will uh, that's the other thing i was kind of referring to okay okay <laughs> i didn't say yet but they will also be yeah. uh on the field as well now shepherd had a in addition to the uh, uh aircraft administration they had a uh pilot training program as well they, well, that's so that has um, historically been offered through Bravo Flight Training, which yes. is still on the field. Okay. And uh, Bravo Flight Training offers gr the ground school aspect of that program. If a student wants to get their pilot's license through the Shepherd program, they can certainly do that while they're in school. They would have to they have to pay separately for the flight uh, flight school part of that program, which is not uncommon for these for these types mm -hmm. of uh, of programs. But they um, they will be. Um, still offering that in that ground school um, part of that program as well with with their existing program and it's my understanding now that what what Shepherd University is working on with Marshall University at the moment is some kind of an articulation agreement so that let's just say you have your bachelor's degree in business administration with that aviation concentration you'd be able to take some of those, class, those classes and put them toward the uh, the bachelor's degree or the, uh, the the commercial pilot's license through Marshall and vice versa. And so that's what part they're working out now, and they're also doing something similar. They'll likely be doing something similar with, uh, with Blue Ridge would be my understanding. But I don't want to speak for any of those schools. Certainly. Yeah. They need to, you know, they'll, I'm sure, at some point come on and, and talk to you a little more about exactly what they're going to do. And Maria, are you on the airport uh, I board am. too, correct? I right? am. Jim and I um, both sit on the airport authority, so full disclosure, so it doesn't look like anybody's doing anything untoward I, here. But um, and I would like to say, just very publicly, we have the most amazing board secretary that I've <laughs> ever seen of any board secretary. What would that person's name be, Nick? Well, Her first initials, initials are Maria Lawrence. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Interesting. Well, and only because I, I joke a little bit, it's the airport authority is not like Blue Ridge. Blue Ridge, um, the board, um, you get appointed to Blue Ridge by the governor. And you sit on the board until the governor says, I'm going to appoint somebody else. So I joke with people that I have a little clock that has some dates on it from when I sat on the Blue Ridge board. And then I sat like three years after that because there was <laughs> not an appointment made. So I, I need to ask Nick how many years it's been that I've been on the airport authority. But it's been um, so 
incredible to watch the growth and development of what's happened um, in that period of time with a lot of effort from from the community, certainly from Nick, from the administration, um, you know, from the specifically from the county commission's um, uh, support of of what is happening out there. And um, it's just it's exciting to see. But there's no commercial service out there. You want to address no, that? Because I'll somebody's be, going to ask that question. I'll be so. happy to. Uh, we uh, <laughs> we actually used to have commercial service at, at the Indeed. Eastern West Virginia Regional Airport back in the 80s. And the uh, that service was discontinued. Uh, that's back when the feds quit providing funding to small communities back then. Of course, ours was a small community. Small communities like ours to support air service. They actually... That they, they reduced that program pretty dramatically, and you had to have applied for that program or applied to stay in that program back in the 80s. It's a closed program, which means once you're out, you're out. And the uh, and and when you look at the Hagerstown Airport, that's it's a, Hagerstown's got a beautiful airport too. They tried to do commercial service for over a decade with the county and the city putting a tremendous amount of money to that airport, and they just could not meet the numbers. And I think that the biggest reason for that is we are not quite at that at that population in this immediate vicinity to to have the kind of demand that you need to have commercial service here. Um, when I have 12 commercial airports all within 90 miles of us and all that can offer flights significantly cheaper than we ever could, um, it's kind of hard to compete with that. And so I know it would be very convenient to have a commercial airport in Martinsburg, but, um, you know, they, they couldn't they couldn't do it at the Hagerstown airport and there are several other airports in that within two or 300 mile radius of us that had the same issue because they're so close to other large airports and they're just, they, uh, people will drive, you know, an hour to go to Dulles if they know that their ticket's going to be half the price. Nick, going back to the, uh, Marshall agreement, what's next? Where you go next? So what's next is, uh, Marshall, um, will, you'll start to see them more and more here as they grow their program. Um, throughout the summer, we will be uh, will be working with them and with Blue Ridge Community Technical College and with Shepherd University um, on the next step of this. We're going to ultimately need to need to do some expansion ourselves because we're completely full. We really don't have any space. We we made some space for Marshall uh, so that we could provide this. It's pretty program. green. It is definitely it's a lot green. of green. Yep. A lot of green. And uh, so we we've got some a small space for it, but they'll outgrow that very quickly. And so we've been working very hard. I've got a great staff. Um, this is pro we probably have a stronger staff at the airport than, than we've than we've had in in a very long time there. Um, we've we've got a great crew, and they're all they all pitch in and help with these projects, which we couldn't do uh, without everybody's support and um we've uh you know we're going to continue to to see some small growth but we will ultimately have some more structures out there to support the educational component when i started at the airport gosh it's been almost five years ago you know it's hard to believe it's really been five years yeah it's been four and a half it's wow. uh and and how does the air guard fit into all this nick well so the air once the program is up and running and once they get what's called a 141 certification um, for their flight school then the guard will be able they'll be able to utilize their uh, their GI Bill to pay for flight lessons and to pay if they want to become a commercial pilot um, so you have two different types of guard members uh, there's obviously a lot of different types but but two different types looking at going into flight training some are just trying to get their private license they want they just want their pilot license and they want to be able to to fly around occasionally then others want to be that commercial pilot and they need some additional classes and some additional training to do that and so um, you'll see I think you'll see both groups uh, looking at that program or the program at Bravo flight training um, and the, in addition to that, I think once Blue Ridge um, brings their aviation maintenance program out, you're also going to see some guardsmen that are going to be very interested in that program. And Blue Ridge has got a fantastic relationship with the 167th, and they understand um, what their needs are pretty well there, too. 
Um, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, Dr. Shipway, she she could probably turn a wrench or two out there. She knows she knows a lot about what happens you mean Dr. in the maintenance. Huh? You said, oh yeah, and Shipway, yeah, Dr. Shipway, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, you, uh, the Air Guard has a state-of-the-art simula- simula- simulator. Yeah, that's uh, nice. Is there any possibility that can be used in the program? Probably not, because that simulator is specific to the C-17. Yeah, okay. And we, we don't fly a lot of those on yeah. the Yeah. <laughs> no, the I side. thought some of the basics. Huh? Right. Yeah, I realize you would not do all the uh, uh, C-17 Pacifics, but there could be some basics that could be taught as well. It, right. it would be fun, though, to have someone fly a Cessna and then get back in on a C-17. It would be an interesting... That would definitely right? be interesting. Right? Yep. Hey, well, they have a pretty nice simulator at the Marshall Flight School down in Charleston. Okay. I think Mr. Whitaker can tell you a little yeah. bit about that. What, yeah. what, what's yeah. the capacity, by the way, for students... In regards to the Marshall and Shepherd programs, as far as how many can, can you have, take at one time? Well, the classroom, as far as that goes, there's at least what twelve. Yeah, 12 we. Seats. Yeah, there's. If you're there's, looking at, to fill the seats, um, but it depends on you know the the uh, the position that you're at in your education or in your in your schooling of, of getting your license. So. And Marshall brought several of their students yes. um, with them when. Um, this past week when they were here to sort of talk about the program a little bit. And these were very competent, confident young people who were really excited about, um, about what they were getting into. So I believe the opportunity had it been there, you know, 30 years ago when I first started out at the airport flying, uh, my my career path would have probably been a little bit different. Not digging ditches, right? Not digging ditches. Yeah, (laughs) I dug myself in a ditch. 40 years ago and i'm still trying to climb out of it so uh, nick what became of the proposal for a charter school at the airport at one point we, i mean we're still we're still working on that it's um you know we would love to have a charter school there the when we we knew that we had to have this educational component i think a charter school would would be huge at the airport but I think the nice thing about these programs, the Marshall program, the Blue Ridge program, and the Shepherd program, the nice thing about those programs being at the airport is that they would really complement a charter school. Um, so we're looking at looking and hoping for maybe some time in the next two or three years that we were, are able to go down that road because I think that that type of program is something that is desperately needed it would you you know you could either focus on aviation or or stem program whichever you chose when you went there Um, and it is it's fascinating to watch kids uh, look at aircraft be introduced to to uh, to aviation and and see whether or not they have an interest to to make a career out of it Um, our 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 holdback right now frankly has just been funding we've funding and time um, if you know you happen to interview anyone on the show that has an extra two or three million dollars and some time on their hands, I've got a co-host like know. that right here. Yeah. <laughs> that co-host. <laughs> All right, we'll take he's, anybody. He's got to pray for that Tesla stock to go back up. Nick, it's had a little, it's had a rough year. It That's right, t- That's tough right. year. It's had a rough year. And by definition, I have a tough year. <laughs> Jim, when's the next air show? Well, we've been talking about that. Uh, we're probably going to be, what, two years out, Nick, uh, for so. a major performing act to come in. Um, I've been looking at a couple things that uh, involves a, a different type of a show. called It's a STOW competition. It stands for short takeoff and landing. Mm-hmm. And it's a group of, of, like, bush pilots that come around, and uh, they uh, – they practice and and then they compete to see who can land in the shortest distance and take off in the shortest distance, mm-hmm. and it uh, you know it it's, makes me tense. Well, <laughs> you're not on the plane at the time, Maria. It's all good. Yeah, and that's not, true. And we're not talking about helicopters. No, no, that, those are v tolls, <laughs> vertical takeoffs. But um, with with that, you know, I've been in t- I've been watching their Facebook page, and it's very fascinating to see the different types of airplanes that you know that are out there that that can achieve this. Some of them are older. Um, you know, like the old um, uh, J3 Cubs, they've been modified enough that they can jump off the ground in about 30 feet, yeah, which is hard to believe. But, uh, but yeah, look on the Facebook page of uh, Stowe Competitions. Jim, thanks for coming in. Well, thanks for letting me, let Nick, me come in and yak a little bit. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Nick Deal. Thank you very much for having us.